Ahoy there, mateys, swashbucklers, scallywags, and sc scuttlebutt? Who writes this stuff? Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Mockups Test Kitchen. My name is Joe, and today we are going to make a pretty popular drink so far uh, from our latest volume of Mocktails Books the scurvy sour. Now, this will not give you scurvy, but it has a buttload of vitamin C in it. Uh, we put a ton of citrus in here, so if you're planning any like long seafaring voyages soon, so going on a cruise may not be the best idea right now, but just in case you are, have one of these first, just to be safe. Just to, you know, fend off any potential cases of rickets. So this one, you know, requires a little bit of hardware, uh, but it actually comes together pretty easily. We are going to start this by getting some nice, long, picky peels off of our citrus. So you want maybe two to three from each kind of fruit. So the trick to this is that you want to, if you see it here, you want to get the orange peel off, but you don't want the white part because that will make it kind of bitter. So you want it to look more or less like this. Remember to wash your fruit first, because Lord knows who's been touching it. Eventually, we're gonna put in this entire sucker's worth of juice, one and a half of these orange, and all of these peels here. There we go. Taking our fruit beating stick, and we are going to just muddle them. So we're just gonna try to get some of the oils to come out. Get some of that flavor. And this is muddling. You're just beating fruit with a stick. Next, we are going to juice our fruit. Here's a trick. Uh, what you want to do is you want to, there's a lot of violence in this video. You want to roll these and really get all the juices smooshing out. You want like internal bleeding in your citrus fruits, essentially. <coughs> Give it a nice massage here. Now we're going to go ahead and juice our citrus. So our one lemon and our one and a half oranges. Sounds so good. Mm. It's like having wet running shoes on. Get close to it so you can really hear these great noises. Ah! And I'm just gonna pour that right into my shaker. Done. Next, I'm gonna chuck in my cinnamon liqueur. That'll sort of add a nice little bit of sweetness because there's so many tart elements to this drink. I mean, the orange juice is sweet in its own way, but that will help balance out the lemon and the apple cider vinegar. Then apple cider vinegar, we are going to want a half teaspoon of this. I tried it with more and it was too much, so a little tends to go a long way. There we go. And last two things. We want an eighth of a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. So chuck that in. And last but not least, our token bitters. I'm gonna do two of these. Now I'm going to stir this up with my knife because I'm super classy. And we are just going to let that sit for about 20 minutes so that the flavors, the oils and the peels can really have a moment to kind of bond with the rest of the ingredients. In the meantime though, we have a very special guest for you today. Uh, local, uh, what's the word? Wizard and apothecary, aka pharmacist, Nicole Chu is going to tell you a little bit more about vitamin C and how it can save you from getting rickets. So take it away, Nicole. So when we think of vitamin C deficiency, we often think of the term scurvy, which we always associate with pirates. And that was because they were out on the open seas for many moons at a time without access to fresh fruit, fruits or vegetables or just a healthy diet to begin with. And our bodies actually can't produce vitamin C. So we need it from external sources. When we think of where we can get our vitamin C, sources are gonna be fresh fruits and vegetables. So yummy things like papayas, mangoes, um, and vegetables. So broccolis, potatoes, um, also cranberry juice and liver. Recommended daily intake of vitamin C for women is 75 milligrams per day. And for men, that would be 90 milligrams. Thank you, Nicole. I am feeling pretty heckin' good about my choice to make one of these today now. So now we're moving on to the egg separation. Do not panic, you totally got this. I have an extra egg here in case I mess it up. So, you know, you might wanna do the same. 
But basically what we're gonna do is first, we're gonna pull out, I should have got a fork for this. We're gonna pull out these peels so they don't mess up the aerodynamics of our shake. The liquid dynamics? I don't know. Uh, now it's time for the separation. So we're just gonna give this a nice sharp crack on the edge and we want the white to go into the drink because that's what makes it so nice and foamy. Isn't that appetizing? And the trick here is to just keep doing it back and forth and you cradle the yolk in between the two halves of your shell. So do that a couple times. There we go. And that's what our little bowl here is for, so just dump this in there. So next time you're making an omelet or a cake, we've got extra egg. Okay, the next thing to do is the ever famous, we've only done it once, but we are moving on to the shaking montage. We are not going to add any ice to this yet because uh, we want the egg foam to get a chance to get nice and aerated. So we are going to shake this hard for 10 to 15 seconds. And to help me put a little muscle behind this shake, Nicole is going to join this montage. So ready? Here we go. Okay, good work team. So, that was cool. I'm gonna pop this off now. And it is looking super nice and foamy. That's exactly what we want. And now is when we're gonna pop in a couple ice cubes, or three. And we're gonna shake that again for another quick 10 seconds to make sure the drink is nice and cold. So, back to the shaking montage. job. Thank you, Nicole, for lending some muscle to that shake. That is so beautiful and foamy. Now we just pour this beautiful scuttlebutt up. I'm going to use my strainer here and there she blows. So there's all that beautiful foam from our egg white. That is looking citrusy and fresh as heck. Gorgeous. I'm gonna give that a little tap. Let it settle for a second. Now I'm gonna prepare my garnish. I'm gonna take one of these orange slices and I'm just going to cut a little wedge into it so that it fits onto the glass. Sexy. Now for the final garnish, I'm going to grab some ground cinnamon so you gotta do this kind of all salt bay, because if you do it too close, they're gonna be big chunky spots, so you gotta kinda just just do one of those, you know, just 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 a dusting. There you have it. The scurvy sour, everybody. This drink is again, it's bright, it's fresh, it's a little bit sharp, um, and also a little bit sweet from the cinnamon liqueur. So I hope you enjoyed mocking it up with us today. Thank you for joining us. And remember, when you're keeled to the brisket and the lily-livered landlubber won't give you no quarter, keel haul the scallywag. Who writes this?